Hey, my name is Will, and I played Stardew Valley Expanded for the first time recently. So in this video, we're going to cover my first 100 days. So before we get started, I'll be the first to point out that I'm not a pro player by any means. And also, to be perfectly honest, so I didn't really have this video in mind when I was playing, but I'm still pretty happy with the end result, so hope you do enjoy it. Anyway, for this playthrough, I had a few things in mind that I wanted to do, so let's just cover them real quick. Overall, I was going to play 500 days so that I could experience all the new content and still have plenty of time to get my farm to a solid point. For the first 100 days, I wanted to get a few goals done, so this is what I was aiming for. So, nothing too ambitious, just something to aim for. I like to get creative and make things look nice when I play games, so for this playthrough, I wanted to have an overall theme and also make the farm look nice when everything was said and done. So since recently I had been playing a bunch of warrior games and doing my best warrior voice, I decided the theme would be just Wario running a farm. Eh, what's that? Wario running a farm? Oh, yes! <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help myself. Anyway, I think overall I did end up with a pretty nice looking farm, but we can look at that at some point in the future. So let's dive into this hundred day journal thing I did. This whole video took me a while to script and edit, so I do hope you all enjoy it. Uh, but be sure to let me know, as this is, I guess, my first time venturing into the world of videos where I'm talking over stuff instead of just playing games, so... Yeah, let me know in the comments what you think. Anyway, let's get started. Alright, here we go, day one. I began with clearing some land, getting some quick resources, and planted the parsnips you get at the start of the game. I made a chest to get some rough storage started. I went to town and started looking for villages to meet. So overall, uh, today I met 25 people, so that's that's a good start. So, first day pretty quick, didn't make any money, so let's skip to day two. Day two, gonna water the crops, spend the excess energy on cleaning up the farm a bit, and then I leave the farm and run into Martin for the first time. There's a fishing quest to get some chub, so I pick that up, and I take my lone geode to Clint to get it cracked open and get some granite. I go see Gunther for the first time to donate the granite, and then run into Victor, and uh, he talks to me about wanting to get a butler. Kinda hints that he wants me to be the butler, but uh, no Victor, I think I'm good. I go give Morris a gift for his birthday because we're nice like that. Though, in retrospect, I gotta say, yeah, this was a waste of time. <laughs> I head back to town and see if maybe the rich people have thrown anything good out, and yep, there's some free fried calamari. Oh yes, Wario loves dumpster calamari. <laughs> oh no. Sorry, I'm gonna be doing this voice constantly. Anyway, uh, I walk around town a bit more, I run into Haley, and then I go see Willy to collect the fishing rod. So yeah, for this playthrough, I wanted to get marriage done in the first hundred days, but also wanted to go with one of the new villagers. So I decided to go with Sophia. To get the ball rolling, I give her a daffodil. Uh, I meet up with Sam, who's finally emerged from his room, and just get to some fishing. And look, my first fish is a sunfish. Okay, that's a good start. It's gonna come in handy because I know those are usually in the bundles. That's an awesome start. I'm so glad I got this sunfish. And yeah, for the rest of the evening, I just end up fishing, looking for that chub, and then eventually head to the saloon to do some socializing before heading home. I store the two chub, sell some of the other fish, including that first sunfish I caught. Farewell, sunfish. The rest of the energy I have left, I just use getting some wood and some stone, and then we call it a day. And we get level 1 fishing and 318 gold for today. Day 3 and it's raining outside. I clear some land so I can head out the south exit and go explore the west to see if there's anything new. There's a new farm which has a new villager called Andy, and then I head over to Sophia's to say hi and give a present. And then head to the docks and collect the 100 gold reward from Willy. And I spend the rest of the day fishing in town. The rest of the evening I just use whatever energy I have left to get some wood. I also make two more chests to get a bit more organization going. And that's day three done, with 200 gold made. Day four, I wake up, I water the crops, and then head out to do some early morning fishing near Leah's before Marnie's opens up. Anyway, I go talk to Marnie and Jazz is still locked up in her room. I haven't met her yet, so in the words of past me, this is, this is creepy but I kind of have to camp her out. <laughs> so I go back outside for some more fishing, and then eventually I finally meet Jazz to complete the Meet the Villagers quest. The next quest is to give a gift to a villager, so I thankfully run into Leah and have a dandelion nearby to get the easy 100 gold. 
I then head over to Sophia's to get one of her cutscenes where she welcomes me to the valley by giving me a sprinkler. What? Man, that's quite the thing to get on day four. But hey, I'll take it. Or as Warrior would say, oh yes! Uh, anyway, I head to the beach for some foraging, more socializing, just getting friendship points really, before heading out to do some fishing down at the ocean. And I got five pieces of gold ore that came from a treasure chest, which pretty nice. Before wrapping up the day, I head to the saloon to do some socializing with the three people in there. And that's day four with 347 gold, mate. Day five. At the crack of dawn, Marnie's over, asking if I want to adopt a cat. After a quick consultation with chat, we welcome Beans to Warrior's Farm. I then learn about a new villager who's trapped in the mountains because of Joja, who coincidentally has also sent a letter explaining the situation, so I guess the mines are accessible now. With the morning tasks done, I head out to meet Andy where one of his cutscenes play. Here Andy is talking about Joja products like he's been paid to do some sort of product placement thing, like as if he's got a camera watching or something. It's a bit weird, but nice guy Andy also lets me know he's sending me some strawberry seeds soon. I head over to the traveling merchant to see if she has anything worthwhile. But nothing really piques my interest. So I decided to spend the rest of the afternoon socializing in town. Over at Robin's, I say hi to Demetrius and then he tells me that Robin has a temper. Don't worry, Demetrius, I won't say anything. Hey, your husband thinks you're a bitch. Okay, bye. Anyway, I go say hi to Linus, who tells me about his tent having been destroyed before. I guess that begs the question, who would destroy his tent from Stardew Valley? I mean, who would be a large enough monster to do that? If I was to take a guess, I'd say it was Demetrius. I bet you Linus probably referred to a tomato as a vegetable or something. I want to do some mining, so I head to where the mines usually are, and then I find that they're not there. So it turns out in Stardew Valley Expanded, they've moved the mines a little bit further up the road. And I can see why, that it puts it right next to the Adventurer's Guild. It seems to make a lot more sense, but I kind of have mixed feelings about this one. I guess we'll see if it grows on me or not. Oh yeah, and there's also a cool boat here, so that's neat. So yeah, uh, I go into the mines, I get the rusty sword that's somehow imbued with magic. Maybe it's rust magic? I don't know. Anyway, I was able to reach the level 5 goal thanks to the soup I bought from Willy. On the way home, I did get lost. This was the first time playing this new map, so I kind of got confused a bit and couldn't find my house for a while. But hey, it's okay. I did get to bed on time, so that's fine. And that's day 5. I got level 1 farming. Didn't make any money, so let's skip ahead to day 6. Day 6. Clint's in the rain with the furnace recipe, and nice guy Andy has sent me strawberry seeds. I can make a scarecrow now, which, thanks to one of the mods I installed, is much easier to place. I quickly pop into Marnie's for some socializing, and then head over to Sophia's to give her a daffodil. Wait, is that Settlers of Catan? Oh man, that game's awesome, I'm liking her already. Anyway, I head into town to check the help wanted, and Victor wants someone to get him an anchovy so he can rub it on his nose, what? Is that a thing? Anyway, after some debate with Chad about whether or not that remedy was a thing, I accept his quest and head down to the docks to try and catch an anchovy for his nose. I end up getting an eel and a strange doll, so I was pretty happy about the eel. I head over to the saloon to do some more socializing with everyone there and spend the rest of my energy just chopping more wood because hey, gotta maximize, right? Didn't get to deliver the fish to Victor, but we wrap up today with getting level three fishing and 344 gold. Day 7, the first Queen of Sauce recipe gives me stir fry and what? Another day of rain tomorrow? Alright, I'll take it. After the morning ritual, I head over to the traveling merchant. Once again, she doesn't really have anything worth picking up. After some quick foraging, I make use of another mod I installed to help me track down Sophia. Because of course Wario would have access to such technology. But first, I head into town and finally get the scene where Lewis tells me about the community center, and Wario sees some Koroks, uh, sorry, I mean Junimos. I've been playing a lot of Zelda lately, so... I head to town to give Sophia a daffodil, Victor his medicine fish, and also pick up the backpack upgrade to get off the inventory struggle bus. One doggo pet later, and I remember it's Lewis's birthday, so he gets a present since he's nearby. Then I head to the museum to donate a couple of things. In the interest of seeing new things, I head to the Joja Mart to see a new cutscene of Claire falling asleep on the job, and also waste more time on Morris. Since I have a bit of time, I decide to go have a look what's past the East Bridge in Grampleton Fields. At the time of playing, it looks like this area is still a work in progress, 
So it's pretty much just a large field with a tower to the far east. So sadly, this was a bit of a waste of time, but oh well. The rest of the day is spent on the farm clearing junk near the cave to make things easier for me when I walk home at night from the mountains. And that wraps up day seven with a whopping 16 gold made. Day eight, and it's raining today. I get a letter from the wizard, so I go pay him a visit to discuss the Korok-like creatures that have appeared in the community center. He brews up a magic concoction for Wario to drink, and after a minor trip out, Wario is cured of his Junimo illiteracy. On the way out, I notice there's a new room to the left and head down there. Rasmodius pops in to tell me that he only lets people he trusts down here, but then he tells me about the books he has and that he's willing to help me pursue arcane knowledge. So I guess he trusts me then. The room has a bunch of books that don't really say much and a line of portals down the bottom which don't seem to be in use yet. But it's cool to see a new area. I leave the wizard tower and head out west to check out the new western forest area. This area is full of trees and that's going to be useful later when I need to expand my farm. I've played through this game a bunch of times and it always does become a problem later where I do run out of trees to cut down and I end up planting trees in the desert or someplace random. So. This is a welcome change. As I'm exploring, I find the Aurora Vineyard. There's a dilapidated house, and there's a lone ancient doll on the floor, and a newspaper. It's very eerie, but there doesn't seem to be anything to do here. I decide to go donate the doll I just found. I head to the bulletin board and pick up the quest where Linus wants a Joja Cola, so that's nice and easy. I also run into Lewis in the rain, who decides to sniff me and somehow knows that I've been in the community center. What do you mean, Lewis? What do you mean you can smell the community center on me? What does that mean? Anyway, I go to the saloon to purchase a cola and then run into Sam. So I gift Sam the cola because he likes those. And I thought, yeah, I'll just buy another one since they're cheap. And, uh, yeah, no, that didn't pan out. <laughs> so I go to Pierre's and have to sell a horseradish and then go back and buy a second cola. So I'm pretty much broke now, but hey, at least Linus seems to be happy with his cola. I spend the rest of the day fishing at the mountain lake where I get all these fish and a nice amount of coal. Oh yeah, and I hang on to the trash because we're going to recycle it later and hopefully get some good stuff. Before heading home, I pop into the community center and begin the donation process and once again just use the remainder of my energy to chop some wood. Anyway, that wraps up day 8. I get level 2 foraging and make 226 gold. Day 9. After a brief harvest, I head to Pierre's to get some seeds, and then head back to the farm to expand the crops area. Throughout the day, I went back and forth between the community center, so here's a list of the stuff I donated. Most of the day is gone, but I figured there's a slime slaying quest to be done, so let's go do that at least. And you know what? I'm glad I did. In the first room, the first bug I kill, it dropped an ancient seed. That's right, day 9 ancient seed. And I also got to complete the slime slaying quest. I also managed to get the floor 10, so I get a free dirk for my efforts. And that wraps up day 9. I made 560 gold today. Day 10. It's Vincent's birthday today. I think from now on I'm just gonna skip talking about the morning ritual, unless there's something major. So just assume that I've done it every time. And yeah, let's just skip to the main events of the day. I set up a small area to the left of the house to serve as a crafting area, and I put a furnace down there. I head into town and check the bulletin board and see that Haley wants a herring from a handsome young man. So since Wario is handsome, I take the quest. And hey, at least she's not gonna rub it all over her face like some other weirdo. Anyway, Vincent's over at the museum with Penny, so that works, because I get to redeem my ancient seed, and as a bonus, also get some cauliflower seeds from the donation. After wasting more time with Morris, I go through the rich people's trash to find a free copper bar, and then head back home to make room for the cauliflower seeds and the ancient fruit. There was a bit of a gap here, so I decide to go around the farm and find some mixed seeds to fill in. But afterwards, I didn't really have much energy to do a whole lot else. So I headed to the saloon to do some more socializing. Upon entering town, I get that cutscene where Linus is going through George's trash, and you know what, I'm not gonna shame the guy. I mean, Wario was eating dumpster calamari and finding whole copper bars before, so who am I to judge? By the way, I've always wondered why Gus offers Linus something that we're never able to make ourselves. Zucchini fritters? Where are you getting these zucchini from, Gus? It's a busy night at the saloon, so I'm able to socialize with six people. At this point in chat, we were talking about who would be a good match for Wario if this was a vanilla playthrough. And I think Emily would, because she's into gems and Wario likes treasure, right? So, I don't know. What do you think? Who would be the best match for Wario if, if you were to pick from the vanilla villagers? 
let me know in the comments. And that wraps up day 10. Didn't make any money today, so let's skip to day 11. It's day 11 and Andy is at my door complaining about the crows attacking his farm. You know, for someone who's been running a farm longer than Wario, that seems to be quite the rookie mistake. After the morning ritual, I head to the museum to donate a topaz, before heading over to Haley to deliver the fish she asked for. Next, I head to the forest where we see the kids poking around the sores. Oh, so this is interesting. It seems that Marlin has the key to the sores now instead of it being a reward you get through the museum donations. After the cutscene ends, I get some spring onions, pay Sophia a visit, do some more socializing around town, and for once, I'm in town at a time where I can go into the doctor's office and visit Harvey. For me, Harvey always ends up being the most neglected villager because I don't really have a reason to go in there. And the doctor's office closes pretty early compared to every other place in Stardew. I then go drop off the potato to the spring crop bundle. And remember I needed to buy seeds earlier, so I quickly go back to Pierre's and buy some more seeds. Next, I head to the Adventurer's Guild to be officially inducted, thanks to the slimes I slayed. I also notice a couple new recipes that Marlin has for sale, which reveals some new foraging. For the rest of today, I try to make more progress in the mines, and immediately got an infested floor that forced me to leave, so instead I did a little bit of fishing for the rest of the day. I didn't get many fish, but I did manage to get a diamond from a treasure chest, so that was pretty lucky. And that wraps up day 11. Got level 1 combat and made 542 gold. Day 12. After the morning ritual and a quick axe hunt, I check out the traveling merchant who doesn't really have anything of interest. Then head to the mountains to get a new cutscene where we learn that Susan is still trapped. Lois tells me to try not to remove the rocks on my own because it'll take a month. Of course, me being the contrarian I am, I go to try it immediately. And yeah, he was right. Anyway, I go give Robin her axe back, I get 250 gold, and Demetrius once again tells me about Robin's temper, this time with his daughter right next to him. Hey, your husband said you have a temper, okay bye. Since Linus is outside, I give him a leak for some easy friendship points, and then spend the afternoon fishing until I run out of energy. I head to the community center and drop off the largemouth bass to the lake fish bundle, and since it's Friday night, I head to the saloon to do some socializing because pretty much everyone is there. On the way home, I do some quick foraging and then get to bed before midnight nice and early. And that wraps up day 12, level four fishing and made 1,050 gold in total. Day 13 and it's egg festival day. I just chop down some trees until I run out of energy. At the egg festival, I spend whatever money I have to buy 19 strawberry seeds. I've done this event so many times that I have a set route I take every time to get the win. It was never really much of a challenge, so I was confident that I was going to get the win. Uh, that is until I realized the eggs were moved. And even though I still got a pretty decent amount, I still lost in the end to Sophia. Guess events are harder now. And yeah, that's pretty much it for today. Day 13 done, 30 gold made. Day 14. It's a traveling merchant day, Haley's birthday, and the Queen of Source teaches me coleslaw. Today at the traveling merchant, she had a battery on sale, but I sadly did not have the money. After the disappointment, I crack open more geodes and then head to the museum to donate a couple of things. After wasting more time with Morris, I head to town to find Haley to give her a birthday daffodil. And afterwards, head over to Sophia's, who also gets a gift. I don't have much energy left, so I fish for the rest of the day. But here's the stuff I got. The rest of the evening is spent socializing at the saloon, before heading home and giving Linus a daffodil on the way back. And that wraps up day 14, 274 gold made. Day 15, and it's Olivia's birthday today, as well as the start of the salmon berry harvest. For presents early on, I default to daffodil because it's easy to find, and most people are happy with it. Unfortunately, Olivia is not very happy with it, so that's a bit of a bummer. Olivia then tells me that she's looking to hire one of Victor's friends to clean the house part-time. I don't know. Is she hinting at me? After leaving the mansion, I head to the museum to donate the bone flute and collect melon seeds as a reward. I spend the rest of the day going around town and the forest collecting salmon berry and also talking to whoever I came across along the way. The salmon berry harvest is an event that I don't personally like later on just because it eats up so much time, but I guess for now I'm happy to do it because I don't really have much energy left today anyway and we can gain valuable friendship points just by talking to people. And yeah, that's day 15 pretty much. I also made 530 gold today. Day 16, first to the forest to get some salmon berry, then to Sophia's to say hi, and then into town to take on a quest to give Demetrius a parsnip. 
I head into Pierre's where I get the cutscene where Morris walks in and just steals all of Pierre's customers by offering them 50% off. You know what? I really feel for Pierre in this scene. But let's be real. Pierre has some pretty annoying business tactics as well. Like, I don't know, maybe slapping on a sticker on my produce and then trying to sell it at a huge markup to make a quick buck. I don't know, nothing off the top of my head. Anyway, it's also exercise day. And then it hits me. Why do they have a roaring fire going if they are exercising in spring? I'll leave that one up to you to answer. Anyway, back outside I run into Haley for some easy friendship points with a daffodil, and then spend the rest of the day gathering berries and socializing. I also manage to squeeze in a little bit of fishing before calling it a day, and also find a rusty spur for the museum. And that's day 16. I reach level 3 foraging and level 2 farming, and also make 569 gold. Day 17, it's time to harvest the parsnips and hopefully I get some quality ones for the quality bundle. Oh, on the way to deliver the rusty spur to Gunther, I do some socializing and then afterwards go to the saloon to buy some salads before going to deliver Demetrius his parsnips and socialize with his family and Linus. And then it's off to the mines for some progress. By the way, did anyone else also not realize you can click on the minecarts to grab coal? I found out by complete accident, though thankfully it was pretty early during my first playthrough of the game. But every now and then I do get a chat member that freaks out when they find out you can do it. <laughs> I don't know. Let me know in the comments if this has happened to you. Anyway, today I went back to my old rusty sword and did much better. I reached floor 16 and found all these goodies. And that's day 17 done. Level 2 mining and 471 gold. Day 18. It's Pam's birthday. After some early morning berry harvesting, I head to Sophia's to get introduced to her friend Scarlet. It's really cool to see so many new villagers. But in the case of Scarlet, I found that she isn't really fully fleshed out, so you don't get many interactions with her, at least at the time of playing. Afterwards, I give Pam her gift, waste more time with Morris, and then crack open more geodes at Clint's. I then head to the museum to donate the following. Next, I head to the East Bridge for some fishing. So I get to the East Bridge, and much to my surprise, we catch this thing called a puppy fish, which... It had me going for a bit, because in my first playthrough, the game showed me a couple of fish I certainly weren't aware existed. Like the blobfish. So I may have had to have checked if the puppy fish existed. I also noticed these fish seem to be worth quite a bit of money, which I really question whether or not that should be the case this early on. I mean, look, I love mods, but sometimes when it comes to balance, mods will introduce things that tend to lean on the side of being too good. So I don't know, what do you think? Do you think this is too much money for one fish? Let me know in the comments. Uh, anyway, that's day 18. I caught a puppy fish, but didn't make any money. Day 19, and Jody is looking for a cauliflower. After the morning ritual, I head to the traveling merchant who has a coffee bean on sale, but unfortunately I don't have enough money, so that's sad. Afterwards, I head to Jody to deliver her cauliflower and collect the 350 gold. I haven't been able to go to Pierre's lately, so today I make the time to buy a bunch of seeds. I went a bit back and forth today, but here's what I donated to the community center. I'm pretty curious about the East Bridge still, so I head back there for more fishing. I'm pretty convinced this is a good way to make money. And what's this? A butterfish? Okay, this one I did not need to look up if it existed or not. This is clearly a fake fish. Unfortunately, I only managed to catch the one before running out of energy, so I head to the saloon and catch whoever was leaving to get some much-needed friendship points. And that was the end of day 19. A butterfish and 160 gold. Day 20 and it's Shane's birthday. Okay, finally got some gold parsnips. Looks like I just need to get another three and then we're golden. <laughs> <clears throat> Anyway, on the hunt for Shane, I get this new cutscene where Jazz is lost in the Westwoods. One of the first things Jazz said to me was that she doesn't know me, so I guess she knows me now, huh? So far, every interaction with her has been, I don't know you. Little shit. <laughs> Eventually, I track Shane down and give him a birthday topaz. He also reveals Marnie's fear of a monster mushroom, whatever that is, I don't know. I pick up a quest to give Rasmodius a dandelion for an easy 120 gold. The rest of the day I spend at the docks fishing, and before wrapping up the day, this happened. Hey, <laughs> let me go to sleep. 
Okay, I don't know if any of you have had the same experience as me, but at least once per playthrough, my pet blocks me from being able to do something. And that's also with the change that was made to just be able to push them out of the way. I feel like you should just be able to freely step over your pet. I don't know, maybe this just happens to me. Let me know. Anyway, that wraps up day 20, made 933 gold, and also got level 3 farming and level 5 fishing. I decide to go with the Fisher passive here to get more money from fish. Because Wario loves money. Oh yes! Day 21. Queen of Sauce gives me a recipe for radish salad. It's off to the traveling merchant. Again, she has a coffee bean on sale that I am unable to purchase. I shake off the sadness by going to say hi to Marnie, and then heading to town where we see Leah in a new cutscene where she is showing us the community garden. Okay, this is one thing I like about Stardew Expanded so far, is how much attention to detail has been added to existing areas. A lot of these changes really do suit the game well, and this one is no exception. So yeah, Leah asks what I think of the garden, and that is, if, if this was Warrior, that would, that would be his response. Bah, who cares? My, my farm can hold 40 times more than this. Oh, yes! I resist the temptation and go with a nicer answer and head off to the mines. And right away I get a second ancient seed. And also on floor 19, I find a pair of sneakers. Man, talk about luck. I get to floor 20 to get the glow ring and stop for some fishing to try and get a stonefish just to get that out of the way. But unfortunately I could not find one. But it was a pretty good haul. And that wraps up day 21 with another 206 gold made. Day 22, and out to the forest to run into Haley before giving Sophia another daffodil. I don't really know what else to give this early on. I mean, at this point, she'd have a pile of daffodils. Anyway, I decided to do more socializing in town and also pick up a quest to collect 25 copper for Clint. This one's a great one to do early because you need the ore anyway and getting money for something you're going to do eventually is always great. I pop into Pierre's to get more parsnip seeds, do some more socializing, get more job hints from Olivia before heading to the community center to donate a tulip to the garden bundle. I head back to the farm where Willie is there to tell me about the Shearwater Bridge to the east being good for fishing. I'm not surprised he's recommending that spot since the fish there sell for more than a gold bar would. After planting the parsnips, I head to the mines to collect ore for Clint. Most of the day is gone, so I'm only able to reach floor 28 before having to head home. And that's day 22, level 4 farming was reached, and I also earned 1474 gold. Day 23. It's Andy's birthday today. I start today by tapping one of each tree to get the ball rolling on collecting tree products. I spend a large amount of the morning trying to figure out where Andy is on the map. It looks like the tracking mod doesn't 100% work with Stardew Expanded. Oh well. After giving up, I visit Sophia to give her a gift. Afterwards, I headed to Pierre to purchase more parsnips and socialize with all of those exercising in front of that roaring fire. After some more seed planting, I finally track down Andy at his house to give him a birthday daffodil. And yep, it's 6pm, so not a whole lot of time left in the day, so I head to the mines to try and get some more progress. Unfortunately, I only managed to make it four floors down, so I didn't get to progress much. But at least I got six coal and the remaining ore towards Clint's quest, which completed it. Wait. Ah, crap. I have to go talk to him to complete it, don't I? Alright, well, I'm not getting a reward then. Anyway, one thing I'm still trying to get used to here is the new spot for the mines. On the one hand, I think it's great that there's more cohesion with the Adventurer's Guild. But on the other hand, that extra distance is a bit killer early on. So hopefully with the minecarts, this will be less of an issue, but I guess we'll see. Anyway, that's day 23, 184 gold made. Day 24, and it's the day of the spring dance. And first thing in the morning, we are greeted with Pierre's Cashback Rewards program, which gives back 590 gold, so that's pretty nice. But yeah, today is uh, pretty short. I go to town to see a new cutscene where Andy loses his mind over Lewis offering to help him. And then I go donate a few things to the community center. I head to the dance, get rejected by Sophia, and that's day 24 done, 791 gold. Day 25. This one's a short day. I visit Sophia, go fishing at the docks, and get super lucky by finding Neptune's glaive and a diamond. And yeah, that's pretty much it for day 25. I make 2,330 gold. Day 26. Since it's the end of the season, and there's rain on the way, I decide I want to upgrade my watering can. But first, I pay the traveling merchant a visit, and finally buy that coffee bean I've been eyeing. Next, since it's Pierre's birthday, I go give him a gift, and then head to Clint's to buy the missing ore I need for the upgrade. 
So in the first year, Clint and Robin sell resources at significantly cheaper prices. So yeah, I didn't want to risk all the back and forth making me miss out on upgrading the watering can. Afterwards, I head to the East Bridge for more fishing. I came across a new fish here called the minnow, which at first confused me because it was standing completely still, but then it made sense when it wasn't really worth any money at all. And that's day 26 done. I get level 5 farming and go with the tiller passive. I also get level 6 fishing and make 4,354 gold today. Day 27, since yesterday went really well with the fishing on the East Bridge, I'm able to afford the coop today. So I quickly go around the farm, chop down whatever trees I need to get 300 wood, and then head up to Robin's to purchase it. From there I head to Emily and Haley's house to get the cutscene where Haley and Emily are arguing about Haley cleaning under the cushions. Which I mean in the context of cleaning a house, I think Haley scored the jackpot if this is really all she has to do in a week. There was a lot of back and forth between the museum today, but here's what I donated. I head down to the docks to say hi to Willie and also buy some trout soup before heading over to the East Bridge to spend the rest of the day fishing for doggos and butter. On the way home, I stopped by the Help Wanted to see that Victor now wants an amethyst to rub on his sore tooth ASAP. Wait, what? What is it with Victor and rubbing weird stuff on his body as some sort of home remedy? And that's day 27 done. I reach level 4 foraging and make another 4,953 gold. Day 28. The Queen of Source teaches me the omelette recipe, and after an end of season harvest, I head to the traveling merchant to purchase more coffee beans and accelerate my coffee production. Next, it's off to Sophia's to give her a gift, and then to the community center to donate a shad to the quality fish bundle, before heading over to Clint's to pick up my copper watering can. While I'm here, I crack open more geodes, and then donate the new things I found to the museum. Next, I head over to Willie's to buy a crab pot and some soup, before heading to the East Bridge and spending the rest of the day fishing. Before heading to bed, I set up the crab pot at the little pond on the farm to get started on the crab pot bundle. And that's day 28 and spring done. 4,000 gold made. Day 29, first day of summer, here we go. Demetrius is at my door wanting to set up a cave to attract some local species. I decide to set up mushrooms because they're a pretty good food source and eventually I do end up forgetting the cave so I feel a bit bad if I forget fruit. Anyway, today is pretty much clearing weeds, setting up the planting area and then going to Pierre's to buy some more seeds. Once that's done, I head back to the community center to drop off the crayfish I caught overnight in the crab pot. Since I'm out of energy, I build myself a second scarecrow and then head to the saloon for social before calling it a day. And that's day 29. Didn't make any money, so let's move on to day 30. Day 30. I get 100 gold for building a coop. I finish planting the rest of yesterday's seeds, and then go around the farm looking for some mixed seeds to expand even more. And yeah, I did this all the way into the evening. Then, on the way home, I got the cutscene with Shane at the lake where he opens up a little bit more. I thought I still had plenty of time left in the day, so I planted some mixed seeds, and then started cleaning up around the farm until, oh, Right. Bed. Yeah, no money made today and that wraps up day 30. Day 31 and I wake up to learn about the explosion overnight being Joja finally freeing Susan from her mountain tomb. I get a letter from Linus saying someone was going through my pockets when I passed out and may have stolen some money. Well joke's on them because I was broke anyway. Zero ramifications or oh, yes! And it's off to town where I get a new cutscene where Lewis and Morris are having a chat about the explosion overnight, sending rocks flying and hitting people's houses. Looks like this was added to just further cement Morris as the villain, in case there was any doubt. I then head over to Sophia's to give her bi-weekly daffodil, and then to the community center to do some donating. I head off to the mountains to check out Susan's farm, which is now accessible thanks to Joja. Whilst I'm at Susan's, I gift her a sweet pea to get the ball rolling on friendship. I head back outside and explore a little further north to find a rapier just lying there on the ground. If I didn't have the Neptune's glaive already, that would have been a nice thing to find. I decide to head to the mines where I managed to reach level 30 before I run out of energy. And yeah, that's the end of day 31. Didn't make any money. Day 32 starts with Susan sending me some melon seeds overnight. I water the crops and head out to give Jazz a birthday gift. Also, now that we're here, let's take a minute to talk about Lewis and Marnie. The first time I played Stardew, I could not believe that a grown man would come to you 
and ask you to go fetch his shorts from the bedroom of a villager. Now that I've played this game multiple times, I can come to this conclusion. And that is, Lewis is an exhibitionist and has some kind of fetish where the thrill of being caught is a high that he's chasing. I, I mean, why else would he ask you to get involved? I mean, look, the shorts are right there. It's not like Marnie wouldn't notice them lying on the ground. Lewis, you just need to call her and go pick them up. But no, Lewis goes out of his way to not only get you involved, but also try to pique your interest by not telling you why his shorts are there in the first place. Lewis even goes one step further one day asking you for some truffle oil, which is a pretty normal request, except for the part where he adds, don't ask what it's for. What do you mean don't ask what it's for? You know that's how you make a sentence worse than what it is, right? By adding that to the end of it. There's no need. The moment you say that, it becomes a sex thing. Especially when Lewis comments about how slick the truffle oil is once you give it to him. Imagine if Lewis approached every favor like this. Oh, hey, warrior, can you get me a banana? Don't ask what it's for. Ah, yes, this banana is quite long. Thank you. This will do nicely. Lewis, stop. I bet you were the one that made that note that shows where you and Marnie are hooking up so you could get busted. You have a problem, man. <laughs> um, mm. Anyway, I donate the maple syrup to complete the exotic foraging bundle to receive Autumn's bounty, and then I spend the rest of the day fishing on the East Bridge. And that's the end of day 32. I achieve level 7 fishing and make 4,196 gold. Day 33. I head off to Marnie and purchase two new additions to the farm. After a discussion with chat, we welcome Nugget and Stewie, the chickens. The traveling merchant doesn't really have anything interesting today, so after that I head back to the farm to make some copper bars. Since I have animals, now I want to set up a silo so we can start storing hay. Should be able to have that ready so we can go to Robin's before she... Oh. So yeah, no silo today. But you know what is open? The museum. So I go donate a prehistoric rib, and then head to the East Bridge for some more quality fishing time. On the way home, I also run into corporate met corporate pants who I ignore, and then set up my crab pots and head to sleep. And that wraps up day 33, 3,665 gold mate. Day 34, and after the morning ritual, I pet and feed my new chickens. I collect some mushrooms because I remember I have a cave, and it's off to Robin's to get that silo, since I couldn't do it yesterday. This time she should be open. Oh. Crap, I forgot to bring wood. Okay, so back home to get wood and... Oh crap, I don't have much wood. Okay, let's chop wood. Alright, finally back at Robin's where I realized that I was looking at the mill costs and not the silo, so I didn't need wood in the first place. Good stuff. Okay, listen, it's at this point that I would like to point out that since I live in Australia, as a streamer, you either have to get up really early or stay up late to be able to catch the peak times on Twitch or YouTube. I'm a night owl, so I choose to stay up late. But if you've ever watched one of my streams, you'll know that as the evening progresses, I often make these silly kind of mistakes. But hey, I laugh at them, so you know what? Enjoy them. Anyway, Silo is built, finally. I ran into Victor, who decided to tell me about the massive tip he left Gus. That's cool, like, I guess. I also pop into the museum to donate a Nautilus fossil. I spend the rest of the evening cutting down trees around the spa. Because, you know, at some point I will make another silo, so you need wood for silos, right? Right? <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, I go back to the spa, get my energy halfway, and then go to the community center to donate a few things before heading home. And that wraps up day 34. I made 242 gold overall today. Day 35, and the Queen of Sauce teaches me how to make a baked fish. I pick up a quest to get a topaz for Sam, and then I give Sophia a sweet pea. To make sure I get the most of being in town, I head over to Clint's to buy some copper. Since I don't have much energy left, I decide to head back to town for more, socializing, give Sam his topaz, and then pop into the saloon to buy a salad to get more energy. Then I head to my new favorite bridge for some quality afternoon fishing. And that wraps up day 35, 2689 gold mate. Day 36, and it's Gus's birthday. I almost forgot to claim my reward from Sam yesterday. Whoops. I go to check on my animals, where I realize I did not check on them the day before, and one of them is understandably upset at me because it didn't get fed. I then get a cutscene with Marnie, where she lets me know that the animals won't wander out of the fenced areas even if there is no gate. Okay, so that's a pretty nice change. While I'm here, I set up a mayo jar to get started on producing some artisan goods. 
I then head to Clint's to upgrade my axe to copper. I go into the saloon to give Gus his sweet pea birthday present and purchase a salad for good measure. Then it's off to the spa to get some energy back. Since I'm playing as Wario here, I like to think that Wario is purposely disregarding Mario's privacy and is going into his change room. I mean, W for Wario, M for Mario. I run into Linus where I give him a piece of foraging for some easy friendship points before heading into the mines. Before I continue delving, I decide to go to the 20th floor and try and catch a stonefish so that we get that out of the way. By the end of the day, I was able to reach the floor 35 checkpoint, so not too bad. On the way home, since there's a lot of grass around, I was using my scythe to get hay for my newly constructed silo. And that's day 36 done. I reach level 6 farming, level 3 mining, and make 1,252 gold. Day 37, I tend to my animals, and then set up an area to the left of the farm plot where I put down my first preserve jar. And then it's off to town where Demetrius tells me, the farmer, who owns a farm, that I, the farmer who owns a farm, should make sure to water the plants on the farm that I own, being the farmer that I am every day. Thank you, Demetrius, for that information. It will come in handy as I am trying to run a farm. <laughs> I'll keep the rest of this day brief. I donated some stuff to the community center, I go to the spa, and then to the mines for the rest of the day, where I reach the level 45 checkpoint. And that's day 37. I only made 138 gold, but big steps towards bundles and more progress in the mines. Day 38, and it's Mara's birthday. After the morning ritual, I head into town to socialize and pick up my copper axe from Clint. I also put my pickaxe to upgrade while I'm here. While I'm in the area, I pop into the museum to donate jade and a prehistoric tool. As I'm walking past the saloon, I check their trash cans to find a free snapper, which, wow. It's a bundle fish and you're only able to catch it when it's raining, so that's a pretty good time saver. I waste no time and go donate it to the ocean fish bundle and also donate a sunflower to the dye bundle whilst I'm there. And so at this point, I remember I forgot to bring Mario a present, so I head back to the farm to pick up a strawberry. She's at the lake, so I head there to give her a strawberry, which earns me a bunch of friendship points because she loves strawberries. Be sure to consult your nearest wiki on what people love, but please be sure to consult Demetrius about what liquid substance to apply to your plants. <laughs> Sorry. Ah. Uh... Off to the spa to recover energy, and then it's off to the East Bridge for some fishing. The luau is tomorrow, and since the butterfish is something that sells for good money, I have a hunch that it is a perfect candidate for the potluck. Anyway, that's pretty much the rest of the day. I put some iron on to smelt, head to bed, and... What's this? Oh, it's the fairy. Please land somewhere good. Please land somewhere good. And that's day 38, with 2,217 gold made. Day 39, it's the day of the luau. I plant more coffee to get future caffeine levels looking good, doing some harvesting, and then heading off to the luau, but not before finding some free trash cookies along the way. Oh yes, Wario loves trash cookies. <laughs> so for this year's potluck, I decided to go with one of the new items from Stardew Expanded. And so I figured what better thing to add to a potluck than a fish shaped like a large stick of butter. I mean, that's gotta go down well, right? And yep. Seems like butterfish was the way to go. Of course, now I can't help but imagine the governor eating a whole stick of butter to himself. So there's a bit of time left in the day, so I spend whatever's left chopping down some wood and hardwood. And that's day 39 done. 2,446 gold made. Day 40, and we get several recipes in the mail thanks to the buttery goodness of the fish from yesterday. And it's off to town for a free trash snack before I pick up my new copper pickaxe from Clint. Then I head to the community center to make some donations. Afterwards, I go give Sophia a sweet pea, check what the traveling merchant has for sale. Nothing, by the way, in case you were wondering. And then I head home to make use of my new sprinkler and plant some summer seeds, because why not? The rest of the day is just getting some quality naked time in before spending some time fishing at my new favorite bridge. And that's day 40, 993 gold made. Day 41, and it's Alex's birthday. It's also raining outside, so I just quickly harvest the crops, craft a beehive for good measure, and tend to the animals. Afterwards, I head over to find Alex to give him a birthday topaz, and then run into Victor, who once again flexes that he made a gigantic tip. After shrugging Victor off, I go to the museum to donate a rare disc and an ornamental fan. Then it's off to the mines for some more progress. 
This time I'm able to make it to floor 50 before running out of energy. Since there's a bit of time left in the day, I decide to use this chance to head to the community center to donate the following. To wrap up the day, I get some more naked time in and then spend the rest of the evening chopping trees. And that pretty much wraps up day 41. I earn level three combat, level five foraging, and I go with the gatherer passive. Also, no money today, so let's just skip to the next day. Day 42, and the Queen of Swords teaches me the recipe for pancakes, and it's off to the traveling merchant. Nothing of interest today, so I go to Sophia to give her her bi-weekly sweet pea, and also purchase more seeds from Pierre. I also get a new cutscene for Sophia, where we catch her as she's leaving the doctor's office. In this cutscene, she seems a bit distant, but we make things better with some doggo pets. I head back to the farm to plant some more melons, and then head to the community center to donate some jelly to the artisan bundle. The rest of the day I spend fishing at the East Bridge, and that's day 42. I reach level seven farming and level eight fishing, and also make 5,557 gold. Day 43, all right, let's get to it. Oh, and what's this? There's a train passing through Sardu Valley. All right, let's go check. Yeah, not much luck on this one. I don't know, I think the trains are never really worth going out of your way to check, unless you're pretty much there at the time, in the immediate area. I think most of the time it's just a waste. Or I don't know, maybe I'm just unlucky. Do any of you have better luck when it comes to the trains? Let me know. I guess since I'm here, let's go get some quality naked time in to restore some energy. Afterwards, I go to Pierre's to finally solve the storage problem once and for all. I also pick up a quest to give Susan a radish. So I go back to the farm, get the radish, head to Susan's farm, and she's in a room I can't walk into because we're not friends yet. So yeah, I settle in for some lake fishing for a few hours, and once the evening hits, I go back to Susan's and am finally able to deliver that radish. So yeah, for the rest of the evening, I decide to go to my new favorite bridge just to try and get some extra money. And that wraps up day 43, 2,878 gold made today. Time for day 44. I craft a recycler today to get started on getting rid of some of that garbage I saved up. One thing I like to do is keep whatever trash I find early on, as you can get some pretty good resources out of it, particularly cloth and coal. Oh yeah, I also remember I have a mushroom cave, so I go harvest them. This is why I pick mushrooms for most of my playthroughs. I do tend to forget about this cave, and it doesn't feel like as big a deal if I forget when I have mushrooms. But you know, while we're here, I want to know what everyone else thinks. I remember in one of my playthroughs, I chose fruit, and there was a chat member who was kind of shocked that I didn't choose mushrooms. So for the next playthrough, I, I picked mushrooms, and then there was someone shocked that I didn't pick fruit, so... I don't know, consensus in the comments? <laughs> anyway, the rest of the day I spent in the mines, I reached floor 60, and immediately tried to catch an ice pip to get it out of the way, but no luck. But I was lucky enough to find Dwarf Scroll 2 and 3, so that was pretty nice to get those. And that wraps up day 44. Level 4 mining was acquired, and I earned 111 gold today. Day 45, and it's Sam's birthday today. I go to Clint's and open a bunch of geodes. Got a pretty decent result. I also think, hey, while I'm here, let's upgrade our axe. Since I had over 5,000 gold this morning. Oh. Well, that's okay. I end up selling one of the refined quartz in my inventory and get the axe upgrade going. Next, I head to the museum and donate the new things I got from the geodes. I also collect the only reward that matters to me, the pumpkin seeds. By the way, does anyone else leave the rewards with Gunther? Most of them are pieces of furniture that I never end up using and it kind of just eats up space. I don't know, what do you do with the rewards? Do you just leave them there? Anyway, Abigail is here and devours the sweet pea I gift her out of hunger in front of Penny and the kids who decide to hang on to theirs. I then head out to find Sophia, who also decides to just hang on to the sweet pea. Guess no one else is hungry, huh? I head to the west and we get a new cutscene where Willy nudges us to try fishing in the western forest sometime. I head out and then I remember, oh yeah, I forgot about Sam. So I pay Sam a visit, watch his band practice cutscene, and then give him a Joja Cola for his birthday. Afterwards, I head to the community center to donate a few things, and then head back to the farm to clear up some debris. Before heading to bed, I make two more recycling machines to process the trash faster, and that's day 45, 2,166 gold made total. Okay, day 46, morning ritual, and I'm off to Pierre's to buy some more corn seeds to fill up the gaps on the farm. Then it's off to the spa for some warrior quality naked time. The rest of the day I spend in the mines where I manage to reach floor 65 before running out of energy. And that's day 46, 2011 gold made. Day 47, still no luck with the recycling. 
Okay, let's say I did the morning ritual, and now let's jump to me going to the traveling merchant. This time she has a Nautilus shell, which is in the bundles. So since shells don't appear until winter, I think this is a pretty good time saver, so I buy it. I also buy the rare seed as fall is coming up and we want to grow the gem berry. I head to Clint's to pick up my steel axe pick up a quest to slay four frozen jellies, and head into Pierre's where we get the cutscene with Abigail where we play Journey of the Prairie King. Then I head to the community center to donate a Nautilus shell. While I'm in the area, it's Demetrius's birthday, so I pop in to give him a birthday strawberry. Next, some quality naked time, and it's off to the mines. In order to get the slime quest done quickly, I resort to doing the mine reset trick. Okay, quickly for those that don't know, if you need to hunt something down in the mines in single player, the easy way to do it is consult the wiki to find out what floor the monster is on, and then travel to the nearest number by elevator. In the first room you just look around for the monster, slay it if it's there, then leave the mines using the elevator and come back to the same floor. Each time you go back to the top and come back down, the floor resets, gets rebuilt, so you just simply go back and forth using the elevator until you hit your goal. So yeah, the slime quest was done pretty quickly. And then I head to floor 60, where after a few attempts, I finally catch the ice pip. And that pretty much wraps up day 47. I reach level four combat and make 479 gold. Day 48. This morning I made more recycling machines, preserve jars, and mayo jars. I've also finally collected 10 eggs of the same type. I head into town to pick up a quest to give Gus a copper bar. On the way back to Gus, I get the cutscene with Penny and George at the mailbox. So who's in the right here, Penny or George? With this one, I usually alternate between the two responses as I think both are pretty valid. Anyway, I deliver the copper bar to Gus for some easy friendship points and track Lewis down at the museum to complete my slime slaying quest. Oh yeah, and Lewis is talking about sliming his pants or something along those lines. I, I, I'm not gonna touch on that. Back outside, Demetrius flexes his knowledge in a cutscene and then afterwards I give him a melon. I then head to the community center to finally donate 10 eggs to the home cook bundle, then head to the spa for some quality naked time before heading to the pier to fish for the rest of the day. And that wraps up day 48, 1,222 gold made today. Day 49 and Queen of Source teaches me the Maki Roll recipe. Lewis awards me 500 gold for being this month's best neighbor so that's neat. Today I want to catch the legendary fish for this season, but first I'll need to repair the bridge at the beach. I cut down some trees around the farm, then go pay the traveling merchant a visit. She has a battery on sale, so this time I buy it so we can donate it to the community center. Whilst looking for Sophia to give her her bi-weekly gift, we get the cutscene between Vincent and Sam, where they are talking about their dad who is off in a war somewhere. I also pop in to see Willie who talks about bait, and also the mysterious back room that we'll get to see later. I fix the bridge, give Sophia her gift, and head to the community center to donate the battery to the engineer's bundle. Then I head to the museum to donate some glass shards. I spend the rest of the day on the East Bridge to hopefully get some funds for tomorrow, before heading home, chopping down more trees and stumps for wood and hardwood. And that's day 49, 2,962 gold made. Day 50, halfway there. It's a stormy day today. I don't have lightning rods yet, so hopefully, nothing of importance gets hit by lightning. So I'm gonna keep this brief. Today, I wanted to catch the crimson fish. So I had enough money to purchase the fiberglass rod, so I went and I bought it. Unfortunately, because it's been a while, I got this rod confused. It only gives you the ability to attach bait, so it doesn't really help with catching the legendary fish, so I ended up restarting the day. This time I tried to catch the fish for the entire day and just could not land it. So in the interest of making sure that I did get the fish before the end of the season, I restarted the day once again. Anyway, after starting the day over again, I finally get the crimson fish right away. So since I had a bit of time, I decided to also catch the fish exclusive to rain in summer. And then the rest of the day was spent on the East Bridge fishing. And that's day 50. I reached level eight farming and make 6,404 gold today. And hey, we're halfway through this video. Hope you're enjoying the journey so far. Real quick before we continue. First of all, I wanna say thanks for making it this far, but also just wanted to point out that the full playthrough for this video and other games that I play through are available over on my VODs channel. So be sure to check it out if you're curious, and if you ever want to catch me live, I'm live most nights on Twitch, Australian time. Also, if you want to help any of my channels, 
just giving the video a thumbs up will help in a big way. Or just reach out with a comment. It lets me know that people are enjoying the content and also helps out with that algorithm stuff that we have to be so worried about these days. Okay, now that that's out of the way, day 51. We get some fertilizer in the mail and we find out that the victim of the lightning storm was a melon. Could have been worse. I chopped down some big logs to get some more hardwood and then head to the community center to donate some corn and hardwood. It's Victor's birthday today, so I head over to Rich Person Manor for a new cutscene where Victor shares some of his books with us. Then, for some reason, once the cutscene ended, Victor was gone. After a bit of confusion, I was finally able to track him down using Wario's stalking device. But not before seeing another cutscene with Martin who is just struggling to work the cash register. Finally, Victor gets his birthday present. Afterwards, I head to the mountains where I get a cutscene with Maru and Demetrius. You know, the first time I saw this cutscene, it pretty much sold me on the fact that, well, if you pardon the Australian, Demetrius is a bit of a wanker. Okay, so Maru leaves the room and Demetrius immediately uses this as an opportunity to tell you that he cares about his daughter and he would hate to see something getting in the way of a bright future. Which is a really weird thing to say, considering, I don't know, we have a place of business, we've been helping out in the community, and we haven't really done anything that would remotely constitute being a bad influence that would affect her bright future. So yeah, when Maru comes back, he pretends like nothing's happened. So of course, just like with this and every other playthrough I've done, I tell Maru her dad's being weird. I don't know, what do you think? Yay or nay on Demetrius being a wanker? <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I just don't like the guy. The rest of the day I spend in the mines, I reach floor 70 and then call it a day. And that's day 51. 310 gold made today. Day 52, I start the morning with crafting a second beehive and then head to the museum to donate a dried starfish. Whilst I'm here, I hand out presents to everyone, including Abigail, who is still hungry for more. It's Willie's birthday today, so I head to the beach to give him a birthday topaz. And while I'm here, I also purchase the iridium rod and a small fish tank to place the dogfish in, because why not? Afterwards, I go to Clint's to get my hoe upgraded to copper. Also, during today, I made a couple of trips to the community center to donate the following. I then head to Marnie's, where I run into Lewis, who assures me he is here to make sure Marnie's business needs are met, as his shorts are in the next room. Yeah, they're right there, Lewis. Nobody else is home right now. Why haven't you gone in there to get them yet? Why are you insisting I go get them? <laughs> Sorry, anyway, I give Sophia her second present of the week, and then head to the mines for the rest of the day, where I managed to reach floor 78 before running out of energy and having to head home. And that's day 52, 1016 gold made. Day 53, another stormy day. Still no lightning rods, so let's just hope for the best. All right, time for the most important thing. Setting up the puppy fish in its fish tank. <laughs> oh man. Okay, I do love how dumb this looks. Anyway, today I head to the ocean to have a crack at catching the octopus. I make myself a cork bobber to make things a bit easier and head on out. I find that the octopus is more difficult to catch than the crimson fish because not only is it tricky to catch, but you also have to go to the beach pretty much right away in the morning since it's only available until 1 p.m. So there isn't really a big window to catch it. And yeah, because it's tricky to get in the first place, I think it just makes it harder overall. So yeah, I did reset the day a couple of times here. On the third reset, finally, I ended up catching the octopus. So before I leave the pier, I just double check my bundles to make sure that I have everything I need from the ocean. Because it would suck if I missed out on a fish at some point, right? Okay, so yeah, now I need to hunt down a tuna, but that shouldn't be too bad, right? Well, funnily enough, before catching the tuna, I end up catching a second octopus after struggling so much to catch the first one. Yeah, that's pretty typical of me. I head to the community center to drop off a tuna to the quality fish bundle and another tuna and tilapia to the ocean fish bundle to finish it off. But yeah, the fish bundles are looking pretty good. It's a good thing I'm on top of fishing. I go back to the farm for some prep work for tomorrow to make sure that I can maximize how much time I get for fishing. It's at this point, it also occurs to me that I need yet another tuna because one is required for the fish taco recipe. So, since I'm trying to get 100%, I head back to the pier and hope that I can catch one before the 7 p.m. cutoff. Thankfully, that does end up happening. And yeah, the rest of the day is just spent fishing at that ace bridge. And that wraps up day 53. I reach level nine fishing and make 5,243 gold. 
Day 54, and it looks like I lucked out. Doesn't look like anything important got hit by lightning overnight, so excellent. I head to the traveling merchant to see what's on offer. She has cloth on sale, which yeah, that's definitely worth it. It means I don't have to get a sheep or a rabbit to get a piece of cloth for the bundle, so that's a big time saver. I head to Clint's to pick up my copper hoe and put my watering can to be upgraded to a steel one. So yeah, I won't dwell much on today. I get to the East Bridge at about 10 a.m. and remain here until midnight. So yeah, let's see, day 54. After a day of fishing on my new favorite bridge, how much did I make in one day? 17,494 gold. Okay, to be fair, I did get super lucky here by finding a treasure chest, but even when you don't take that into account, that's still almost 12,000 gold just from fishing. Yeah, that is absolutely crazy. Day 55. Emily is at the door since I purchased cloth, so now we have access to the sewing machine. With the massive cash injection from yesterday, I decide to now work towards a barn. So the first part of the morning is spent chopping down trees and clearing debris. I then head into town to look for Haley, as on the way home yesterday I did pick up a quest to give Haley a pike. I run into Lewis and give him a pepper for some good friendship points, and then head to the beach to continue looking for Haley. We get the sports ball cutscene with Alex, find a lost book, and deliver Haley her fish. Easy friendship. While I'm around town, I go find George to also give him a pepper to complete his quest. I pop into the community center to drop off cloth to the artisan bundle, and then head to the mountains to get some quality naked time in. And then the rest of the day is spent in the mines for some more progress, as well as trying to gather stone for the barn. I do make some decent progress, but unfortunately I fall short of reaching floor 85. And that's day 55 done. I reach level five mining and pick the geologist passive. I also earn 570 gold. Day 56, and we arrive at the end of summer. Queen of Source teaches me a recipe for bread, and I get the day started by creating two kegs to get started on Wario's caffeine addiction. I chop down some more trees around the farm since I'll be spending all this wood very soon. I check the traveling merchant, who once again has more batteries on sale. I end up accidentally misclicking and purchasing a horseradish, but I do pick up two batteries as well. I also run into Jazz, who gets an amethyst as a gift. By the way, just to touch on the geologist passive, this is the reason I tend to go for it. Gems are universal likes for almost everyone. It just makes it easier to have something to give practically everyone without risking getting it wrong. I then head to the museum and donate a rusty cog and a prehistoric scapula. I head to Clint's to collect my steel watering can and put my pickaxe to be upgraded to steel as well. You know what, while I'm here, Clint also gets a gem. I continue my gifting train with Victor, Sophia, Jody, Susan, and Andy. Oh, okay, so yeah, Andy is one of those cases where he hates gems. Anyway, off to the mountains to get our barn construction started. But first, I purchase a workbench, so now I can set up a single point to craft items from. Yeah. I really need to clean up, so I temporarily place the barn in a spot that didn't take out too much grass. Next, since I have money left over, I go back to the traveling merchant and buy one more battery for good measure, and go back to the farm to place my new workbench and craft a quality sprinkler. I spend the rest of the day at the East Bridge before it's time to go to the Dance of the Moonlight Jellies at the beach. In the first couple of years, I always try to attend all the events, as it's just a good way to maintain friendship points with villagers I don't talk to often. But eventually, this particular event is a little tedious because you can't skip the cutscene and you just have to sit there for a minute to watch it. And that wraps up summer. I reach level 6 foraging, also 5,035 gold made. Alright, time to begin fall. It's day 57, so it's gonna be a busy day. I throw some coffee into the kegs and get going on setting up the farming area. I head to Pierre's, hand out some gifts, and buy a bunch of seeds. And I set up all these seeds as well as the rare seed. Since this eats up the majority of the day, I spend the rest of the evening fishing at the East Bridge to earn back some of the money I spent. And yeah, that was day 57 where I make 5,369 gold. Day 58. So I open up the day by clearing some more rubble and chopping down some stumps for some more hardwood. Since it is raining today, I decide to spend the day fishing. When I arrive in town, Robin and Lewis are in the rain putting up the special orders board. Anyway, I go to Willie's to buy some bait and some trout soup. I then pop into Pierre's to buy more bok choy seeds so that I have a steady supply of stuff to plant. 
I then head to the mountains to catch this season's legendary fish. There was a little bit of confusion here initially as this area has changed quite a bit in Stardew Valley Expanded. But after talking with chat for a bit, they assured me that the spot to catch the legendary fish was this new bridge that they replaced the old wooden plank with. And sure enough, after a few attempts, I catch the angler. So then I head to the east bridge for some more fishing. At about 4pm, I remember my steel pickaxe is ready, so I quickly head over to Clint's to pick it up before I forget. So then I head back to the bridge, only to be reminded that it's Penny's birthday today. So, in the name of friendship, I drop what I'm doing and I head over to her house to give her a ruby. And then finally, the rest of the day is spent at the East Bridge fishing, where I leave at about 10pm to go donate some fish that I caught to the community center. And it's at this point that I realize, oh, I haven't donated a sunfish yet. Ah, but that's okay. I've been keeping backups of pretty much every fish so far, so no problem. One thing I'll note here, the East Bridge let me catch a lot of catfish, which I have decided to keep instead of selling, simply because Willy loves catfish and it will make for easy friendship points with him. And hey, it beats having to give him diamonds. Anyway, that's day 58 done. I reach level 10 fishing and pick the angler passive. I also make 5,390 gold. Day 59 and Marnie sends me a quest for Amaranth. I head to the southern entrance of the farm, I clear a lazy path and head to Marnie's to purchase some cows. So after a quick discussion with chat, we welcome Hef and Mecca to the farm. I also purchase the milk pail whilst I'm here. I craft a new beehive and place it next to the fairy rose that is growing. So yeah, yesterday I noticed that I needed a sunfish to complete a bundle. So I go through my chest to look for one. It's now that it becomes apparent that I did not have one. Okay, no problem. So I head out to the forest to try and look for a sunfish, but end up catching a bull trout instead. So after a few casts and no luck, I decide to double check the wiki to make sure that I was fishing in the correct area. Oh. Oh no. How could I have not gotten a sunfish? What? I store the two chub, sell some of the other fish, including that first sunfish I caught. Farewell, sunfish. Okay, so yeah, the very first fish I caught was a sunfish and I sold it. And now there's no way to catch it. <laughs> so the only way I can finish this bundle in the first year is going to be by hoping that the traveling merchant will sell me one because that is a possibility. But as past me put it, I may have gotten fucked here. So yeah, I mean, let's hope for the best, but yeah, it would be tragic if this one fish is the reason I don't finish my bundles within the first year. Anyway, I head to the spa for some quality naked time and also reflect on the choices that led me to missing the sunfish. <laughs> the rest of the evening is spent up on the mountain lake fishing. I keep all the carp I caught here, as carp is usually what I end up using for cooking recipes later that ask for a fish. Plus, it also has its own unique recipe. And that wraps up day 59, a day of sad revelation and 4,506 gold. Day 60, all right, time to regroup after the sunfish fiasco. Curiosity gets the better of me, and I look up how much the sunfish will cost me if the traveling merchant sells it, so I can keep that money at all times. So it turns out it can range from a hundred to a thousand gold. Oof, that's gonna cost me. Anyway, I start the day with giving Sophia a present, donating a ruby and prehistoric vertebrae to the museum, and then donate a couple of things to the community center. After getting some quality naked time in, I do some fishing up at the mountain lake, and then later get a cutscene where we learn about Linus's secret bait recipe. I then head to Gus's to purchase the triple shot espresso recipe. The rest of the evening is spent at the East Bridge fishing. And that's day 60. I made 3,412 gold. Day 61, another rainy day, so I move the last of the beehives over to where the fairy rose is, and then it's off to the traveling merchant to see what's on sale. More batteries on sale, but I decide not to get any since they're 2,000 gold each. I go back to the farm and spend some time cleaning up before heading to the mountains where I walk in on the cutscene where Robin and Demetrius are having a debate about whether or not a tomato is a fruit. All right, I'm gonna weigh in on this one. Now, look, Demetrius, you may be right. A tomato is technically a fruit, but let me paint you a picture. It's your birthday and Robin has told you for your birthday, she was making you a nice cake topped with fruit. So you get all excited. You're gonna be sitting there in your chair, eagerly awaiting this cake to come out. And then, bam! Robin plops down a cake with large chunks of tomato on top of the cake icing. Now I bet if this happened, and Robin said, What honey, tomato is technically a fruit. You'd look at her funny. That is why, in this sense, 
Think of what people would normally associate with fruit, instead of being technically correct. Because otherwise people will technically think you're an asshat. Anyway, I build a pond next to my crops, and then head to the mines for some more progress, and hopefully find some iridium to finish the engineer's bundle to get minecarts. I'm able to make it to floor 94 before I have to head home. And that's day 61. I reached level 5 combat, pick the fighter's passive, and also make 3,586 gold. Day 62, and another day of rain? Nice. Today I decide to spend the whole day in the mines to either get to the bottom or to get minecarts going. So I grab some mushrooms out of my totally not forgotten about mushroom cave and get going. At about 7pm I reach floor 100 and get that tasty star drop, and I take a minute to try and fish out the lava eel to get that out of the way. Who knows, I might get lucky. And then literally three casts later... Okay, so that's done. I get a bit unlucky with the next few floors, so I do fall short of my goal, and I'm only able to reach floor 103 before having to go home. Oh crap. I think I left a little bit later than I usually do. Am I gonna be okay? Okay, it looks like I'm gonna make it. Hey! Get out! <laughs> why is it allowed to do that? Yes, why is this allowed? Has this ever happened to you? Let me know the absolute worst time your pet has gotten in the way. Uh, yeah, anyway, day 62 done. I reach level six mining and make 570 gold. Day 63 and what? Another day of rain? Okay, that never happens to me in the first year. Usually in the first year, I find it super lucky to even get two days of rain back to back. But now this is three and there's a fourth day of rain tomorrow. If I had known, I would have put my watering can to upgrade again, but man, wow. Anyway, I get the recipe for tortillas from the Queen of Sauce, head to Piers to buy more pumpkin seeds, and then to the mines to hopefully finish clearing them. But once again, due to a couple of unlucky flaws, I only managed to make it to 115 before having to call it quits and head home. So yeah, that's day 63, I made 1,878 gold. Day 64, it's now the fourth consecutive day of rain. It's the start of blackberry season, but I have my hesitations about going to look for them. Yeah, collecting blackberries can eat up the whole day, and if this was about money, I could probably get more money here if I went to fish at that east bridge. So I just decide to retrieve Linus's basket and collect what's immediately near me. I give Linus his basket, and then head to the mines to complete the final five floors. For the rest of the evening, I just go around the mountain cutting down trees and also collecting whatever blackberries I came across and also accept a quest on the special orders board to slay 50 skeletons. So since there's a bit of time left in the day, I head to the mines and do the old elevator reset trick to slay as many skeletons as I can before the day's up. And that wraps up day 64. The mines are complete finally, I reach level 9 farming, level 6 combat, and earn myself 2018 gold. Day 65, no rain today. I head into town where I get a new cutscene with Victor at the town cemetery. So far, the interactions with Victor have been about books and money, so it'll be nice to see something a bit more deeper. So we learned that he's in front of a tombstone that he bought for his pet cat that went missing. Which is the first heartfelt thing to come out of his mouth so far. But chat wasn't really convinced, and to be honest, now that I think about it, I guess neither am I. So yeah, I mean, the situation around the missing pet, look, that's very heartfelt, and it really, really sucks for that to happen to him. However, purchasing a tombstone bigger than any tombstone in town and then placing it in the graveyard where people's relatives are buried? Yeah, I don't know man, that seems like a bit of a flex. Anyway, I go buy some yam seeds from Pierre and then head to the woods to chop down some stumps for some more hardwood. I then head home, set up a sturgeon pond and do some general tasks around the farm before heading to the mines to slay some more skeletons using the reset trick. I managed to get a few more skeletons slayed before heading home and once again clearing the trees at the southern exit of the farm that have all miraculously grown back. And that wraps up day 65 with 3624 gold made today. Day 66. I start the day by heading over to Robbins to get my first house upgrade at last. I then head to the North Mountains where we get a new cutscene with Clint standing in front of a boulder that blocks the path that leads to the summit. Okay, now in vanilla, the summit is only reachable once you 100% your playthrough. So I do find it a bit weird that it's letting you get to the summit now. I don't know, maybe they'll do something different later. Anyway, I spend some quality naked time at the spa and then get the idea 
to crack open a bunch of geodes in hope that I find Iridium Ore to be able to get minecarts. So I head home, pick up as many geodes as I can, and then head over to Clint's where we get a new cutscene with Clint. He goes over his plan to destroy the boulder blocking the path to the summit, which requires collecting a few resources for him. We'll get to that later. As I start going through the geodes, I begin to think that I won't find one, when suddenly, on the second magma geode, we have success at last. Since I'm here, I keep cracking the geodes until I run out of money, and then head over to the museum to donate all of the following. Since we have quite a collection now, I also spend a bit of time organizing the collection to make it look nice. I then head to the bulletin board and collect a quest to get some copper ores for Clint, since that's a nice and easy one. I then head to the community center to donate a single piece of iridium, and at last complete all of the bundles in the boiler room. We now have minecarts. I head to the mines and repeat some old floors to get some copper ore for Clint's quest. And once that's done, I spend the rest of the day slaying skeletons where I can. And that wraps up day 66. 380 gold total today and the minecarts are finally up. Day 67. First up, I make another furnace from the copper ores I got yesterday. I then head over to Jody's house since it's her birthday. I kind of ignored the last couple of birthdays to focus on the mines, but now since they're done, I pop in to give her a topaz for some easy friendship points. With that out of the way, I head to the spa for some quality naked time to recover some energy. But then, it kinda hits me. The minecarts are up and running, which is great, but the mines in Stardew Valley Expanded are located much farther away from the spa. And it makes me wonder if to get to the spa, it's just quicker to cut through the north exit of the farm and just walk. And yeah, I mean, the mines being next to the Adventurer's Guild makes sense, and I'm sure later the relocation will be justified even more. It seems like if I want to go to the spa or Robins, in some cases, it might be quicker to cut through the farm. I don't know, what do you think? If you've played Stardew Valley Expanded before, do you think the mines are too far away? Do you like where they are? Or maybe do you think the way they were originally is better? Anyway, the rest of the day is spent slaying skeletons in the mine, so not a whole lot else to say about today. And that wraps up day 67 with a thousand gold made. Day 68. First up, I decide to put away two recycling machines since I'm pretty much all caught up on garbage duty. I then move my kegs over to make room for some more furnaces, and hey, look at how nice and symmetrical that's looking. I then head to the traveling merchant as this has become the most important thing I need to do each week. And nope, no sunfish. However, there is a duck feather on sale. And since I don't have ducks yet, I decide to buy it for the bundle so I can focus my money elsewhere. Even if the sunfish fiasco is resolved, in order to get a greenhouse, I'm going to need to get goat's cheese and then hope a truffle goes on sale to make some truffle oil. Even if I was to get a pig, it probably wouldn't find a truffle before winter hits, and in winter, the pigs do nothing. So I just have to hope that everything required for the greenhouse just pans out, and then any remaining bundles that need the fruit are able to be completed by the end of winter. Anyway, I head over to Clint's to smash open some more geodes, and then head to the museum to donate. I then head to the bulletin board, and once again, Clint wants to see more copper ores. Alright, this is one of those quests I always grab because if you're doing mining, it's probably something that's going to happen on its own anyway, so it's worth picking up every time. Throughout the day, I made some donations to the community center, so here they are. The rest of the day, I spend in the mines slaying more skeletons. It's here where I spend a bit more time talking with chat about my current situation and the bundles a bit more. So then the question gets asked about how much money I've made so far. So let's take a look. Hmm. Alright. So yeah, that's not a lot of money. Since this is the first time I'm playing Stardew Valley Expanded, and I didn't have a playthrough of Stardew on YouTube, I had been focusing on story and being more social than I normally would. But I guess if I want to have any hope of having a really nice looking farm by the end of this playthrough, I need to start making money. So I finish the skeleton slaying quest and then head to the East Bridge for some late night fishing. So it's here I decide, okay, it's time to accelerate how much money I'm making starting tomorrow. So that wraps up day 68 with 5,902 gold made. Day 69. All right, so I didn't plan this, but let's just get this out of the way. My money-making journey started on day 69. And yes, I realize I'm an adult, thank you. All right, so the new house is ready and I have some more space now. So the first thing I do is move the bed to a much more logical spot. 
All right, I know some of you are going to hate that, but don't worry, by the end of this playthrough, I will make sure I make a really nice looking house. It's just for now. I go outside and Gunther is there to thank us for our donations to the museum and to know that we will get a reward soon. My sturgeon pond wants a diamond, so I give a diamond to the pond to make the fish happy. It's Abigail's birthday today, so I grab an amethyst and head to town. I get a cutscene where Marlin heads into the sewers, so we'll check on that later. First, I give Abigail her birthday present, and also buy some pumpkin and bok choy seeds to get through the rest of the season. I then head to the community center to donate a pumpkin to complete the fall crops bundle. After a little bit of tree chopping and quality naked time, I head back to the farm to chop even more trees and clear some rubble. I lay down a new area and put down six preserve jars, bringing the total to nine. I then place down the beehive I got from the bundle to bring the beehives to four. I drink some soup, chop more trees down, clear more rubble, and use the resources to make a cheese press and two more preserve jars. And finally, I plant some trees near the small pond, which I'll set up some tappers here in future. And that's day 69, 7,115 gold made. Day 70. And in the mail, we get a big 40,000 gold reward for being so generous to the museum. Nice. Today, I decide to do a fire sale on all my gems. I take half of my gems and sell them. On the way to the traveling merchant, I chop down a bunch of trees as I'm going to use them for the barn upgrade now. So, will there be a sunfish this time? Nope. But there is goat milk on sale. I can just turn this milk into goat cheese for the bundle right now. So that was a big pickup. Anyway, more wood chopping before I go back to the farm to put the goat's milk into a cheese press. I head to Robin's and buy a bunch of stone and wood to get a big coop going. I also move the coop over to where the barn is for convenience. Don't worry, I'll fix up the position of it later. After some quality naked time to reflect, I head to the community center to buy most of the bank vault bundles and also donate some cheese. Back at the farm, I sell the cakes I got as a reward from the bundles, move the preserve jars over to the new spot, and make two new kegs. Oh yeah, I forgot about the queen of sauce, so I also pick up the recipe for trout soup. After that, I spend the rest of the evening clearing more trees and making another five preserved jars, bringing the total to 16 now. Day 70 done, I reach level seven foraging and make 5,983 gold. Day 71, and Jody is at my door first thing in the morning with the large mouth bass dinner quest. First up, the Stardew Valley Fair is tomorrow, so I prepare the nine items I'll be adding to the Grange display. So yeah, after some cleaning up around the farm, I take my bi-weekly present to Sophia. I head to the mountains to chop some wood, get some quality naked time in, before it's off to dinner with Jody and the fam. Okay, Jody, I brought the fish. Where do you want the fish? Oh, yes! Yeah, I've always found it hilarious that we just throw the fish we're about to eat on the floor instead of, I don't know, the kitchen and its many counters. After the delicious floor fish, I head to the community center to donate 25,000 gold and finish the vault bundles to finally have the bus repaired. I head back to the farm and set up my first crystallarium. All right, I'm going to use this moment to say that you should put Ruby in your first crystallarium. There are other popular options, but I believe Ruby is the best. Why? You can find a short video as to why I always go with Ruby for my first crystallarium in the description below. Trust me, there's a very good reason. You don't want to miss out on it. Anyway, the rest of the evening is just cutting down more trees and then making one more preserve jar at 1.40 in the morning because why not? And that wraps up day 71. 1,145 gold made. Day 72, and it's the Stardew Valley Fair, so it's gonna be pretty short. I set up two more tappers, do some wood cutting around the farm, then head to the fair, get my Grange display judge, which earns a score of 92, and then do some gambling on the totally not rigged spinning wheel to get enough tokens to buy all the prizes. Okay, in the interest of discussion, I'll also say that Stardew Valley Expanded adds more things to see at the fair, such as more contestants for the Grange display competition, as well as random visitors. But there isn't really anything new to do other than what was already in vanilla. Still, it's nice to see some new stuff. I would love it in the future if we were able to have new things to do at some of these events. I don't know, what do you think? Anyway, before wrapping up the day, I do some late night woodcutting, and then it's bedtime. And that's day 72, 6,940 gold made.
Day 73, the coop upgrade is done, so I place an egg in the new incubator. I've also collected enough milk to donate, so I take that and a bunch of other things to the community center. And then it's off to the desert for the first time. So immediately upon arrival, we see that the desert has a completely different layout. I take a triple shot espresso and begin to explore the new surroundings. And yeah, right away, you can see that the desert is way bigger than usual. Also, the entrance to the mines is now located to the south. I kind of like the new layout changes here because it makes sense that buildings that people visit would be close to a bus stop and not tucked away in the corner. And you know, the spooky mine with a skull both in the name and on the sign is just far away from the general public. So yeah, I'm a fan of these changes. Anyway, at this stage, I'm still on an iron pickaxe, so things are going to be a bit slow. But hey, I'm hoping for some lucky pockets of ore at least, so we'll see how we go. And would you look at that, pretty much right away, get a nice cluster of gold. Also, my first spicy eel from slaying a serpent. So early on, I think infestations are actually a good thing. Slimes in the skull caverns will often drop iridium ore, and if you're really lucky, a whole iridium bar. Plus, the more slimes we slay, it brings us closer to getting a slime charmer ring from the Adventurer's Guild. Now, for those that don't know, once you slay a thousand slimes, you can go claim the slime charmer ring from Gil at the Adventurer's Club. And this ring makes you immune to damage from slimes. I think it's one of the best items in the game as you no longer have to worry about being swarmed by slimes and being sent to the hospital. All right, so for the rest of the runs I do in the Skull Cavern, I'm going to try and keep it as brief as possible and just summarize what floor I get up to and any good loot I get from the run. But yeah, since this was the first run, I think it was good to go over it in detail. On my way home, I also noticed that one of the serpents dropped a rabbit's foot. So that means I don't have to stress about buying rabbits now as I have that bundle sorted. And that wraps up day 73 with 5,999 gold made. Day 74 and I get a letter from the mysterious Mr. Chi, enticing us to explore the mines further. Oh, don't worry, Mr. Name, almost everyone gets wrong. We will. It's Marnie's birthday today, so I consult with my local wiki to find out that she likes pink cake, and I just happen to have some. I also deliver some amaranth to her as well to complete that quest. You know what? While I'm here, I'm gonna do something. Okay, and now... Oh, yes! Uh, he's not getting them back. Yes, Lewis is never getting these back. You heard me. But more on that in the future. Before heading to the desert, I grab my ruby and quartz so that I can trade for spicy eel and bombs. And then it's off to the skull caverns for round two. Now with this run, eventually I am forced to leave at floor 17, but here's the haul from today. So despite bleeding out, I come back to the farm to water the plants since I decided not to do it earlier on in the interest of maximizing the time in the mines. The rest of the evening I spend on the farm clearing out more junk and cutting down trees. Don't worry about the excessive bleeding, it's just the flesh wound. Just ignore the health bar spurting blood everywhere. It'll be fine, I'm sure. And that's day 74. I reach level 7 combat and make 2,752 gold. Day 75 and Marnie is at the door in the rain asking for cave carrots. You know, I find it funny there are moments where villagers show up at your house at the crack of dawn and will patiently wait for you to leave your house, even if it's raining. Gee, if only there was an easier way for people to communicate something to another person. Did you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys all have phones, phone, right? <laughs> Ah, vintage memes. Anyway, back to today. Using whatever white algae I had lying around, I make some pale broth as a food source. Since I'm going to be eating that spicy eel, I tend to make food that doesn't offer a buff so that it doesn't override the spicy eel buff. I have time to spare before it's time to head to the bus stop, so I just do some minor tasks around the farm and then go deliver the cave carrot Marnie requested. Since she did wait in the rain to ask me and had no other way of asking. I also pay a visit to the traveling merchant to see if my bundle problems are solved. And nope, nothing. So it's off to the mines where today I'm able to reach floor 29. So the goodies of note. And that's day 75 with 2,880 gold made today. Day 76. So it's been a week since I started my money making journey. Let's check in on how much money I've made now. So in the course of a week, I bumped up my funds by just about 100,000 gold. Yeah, okay. I think I may have focused on being a little too social. Anyway, I head to Robbins to build my first shed on the farm and then head to Clint's to get my pickaxe upgraded to gold so we can start making some more progress in the skull caverns. Whilst I'm in the area, I head to the museum to donate a dinosaur egg and the prehistoric tibia. Next, I head to the community center and donate a couple of things. I then go pick up the community cleanup quest since I need to do something whilst my pickaxe is being worked on. So this one's a pretty easy one to do. 
as all you need to do is head to floor 100 in the mines. I find this spot works best because trash is pretty common and you can also catch a fire eel if you're lucky, so it's win-win. After I get enough trash, I go drop it off and yeah, that pretty much wraps up today. Day 76 done, with 2,762 gold made today. Day 77, the Queen of Sauce teaches me the glazed yams recipe. And in the mail, Linus rewards us for cleaning up the waters with a recipe to grow fiber. I head to the traveling merchants in the hopes that she is selling one of the critical items I need, and of course, nope, nothing. I then head to the west woods and do a bit more wood chopping and decide to head up the north exit to see what there is there. And hey, it just connects to the farm, so that's pretty handy. One of the common things I hear is just people talking about how difficult it is to get a lot of hardwood. So now I guess it won't be so hard. Anyway, on the way to the spa, I get a cutscene of Linus nice and happy in the pristine waters of Stardew. Despite us only really focusing our efforts in a single cave. Since my pickaxe is still with Clint, I spend the rest of the day just chopping down trees in the forest around the farm. Later, I also take the time to cut some grass for some animal feed. And yeah, that's day 77 with 4,810 gold made today. Day 78. The shed is done, so I begin moving things in. I go pick up my gold pickaxe buy some more bok choy seeds from Pierre, and then head to Robbins to construct another silo in the corner of the farm that I'm never going to do anything with. After some quality naked time, I spend the rest of the day chopping down trees around the farm. Before calling it a day, I make six more preserve jars and place them in the new shed. I also spend a bit of time setting up a chest that'll serve as a storage area for stuff that I want to throw into the preserve jars. Anyway, that's day 78 done. I reach level 10 farming and go with the artisan passive. I also make 5,000 265 gold. Day 79. I take one of the preserve jars that I didn't put anything into and set it up outside to act as an indicator. Also, the chicken I was incubating hatched, so we welcome Katsu to the farm. The sweet gem berry has fully grown, so I head off to the woods to give it to the creepy statue for a star drop. My mind is filled with thoughts of garlic. Garlic, oh yes! Since a lot of the day has gone by, I decide to once again cut trees down around the valley to get more wood. Before calling it a day, I move the remaining outside preserve jars indoors. So now the right side of the farm is our designated refining plant. And that's day 79. I reach level 8 foraging and earn 10,806 gold. Day 80, and overnight, I reach the 250,000 gold milestone. It's George's birthday today, so I head over there to give him a birthday leak for some serious friendship points. I also head to Robbins to get started on a deluxe coupe, and after buying a bus ticket and getting stuck on Pam, I head to the desert with our new gold pickaxe in hand. I trade my rubies for the ever-important spicy eel, and forage whatever I can on the way into the Skull Caverns. Okay, let's hope for a good run today. Well then. So, after consulting the wiki, it turns out the desert in Stardew Valley Expanded is much, much bigger, and the spot where you get the Galaxy Sword is located all the way down to the south. So, whilst it is further away, this change does make sense to me, as I thought it was weird that a spot where a mystical sword falls from the heavens is near a bus stop. Anyway, Galaxy Sword in hand, I head back to the Skull Caverns. I managed to reach floor 30 before having to head home. And look at all the stuff I got. And that wraps up day 80 with 2014 gold made today. Day 81. I pick up a quest to collect hardwood for Robin for a new bed design. Thanks to yesterday's super lucky drops from the Skull Caverns, I'm able to donate a rabbit's foot to the Enchanter's Bundle. Back at the farm, I move the remaining outdoor kegs into the shed, as well as crafting one more to add to my growing factory. I cut down more grass to get food for the animals, before heading into the woods for the rest of the evening to get a start on collecting hardwood for Robin. And that's day 81 with 7,665 gold made today. Day 82, Robin is done with the upgrade and it reminds me to throw a dino egg into the incubator, so I do that. I then head to Marnie's to purchase some heaters because winter is just around the corner now. On the way out of Marnie's, I pray to the RNG gods in the hope that my bundle woes are going to get resolved. And nope, still nothing. I head to the woods for some more hardwood gathering, then follow it up with some quality naked time before spending the rest of the evening chopping down more trees around the farm for good measure. I also clear the path on the west side of the farm that leads to the spooky abandoned building. Before calling it a day, I drop off the heaters to the barn and the coop. And that's day 82 done, with 3,376 gold made. Day 83, Demetrius sends me a fish in the mail, and then I head to the forest to do the last of the hardwood gathering for Robin's quest. With that done, I head to the carpenter's shop to build a mill, 
and also turn in the 80 hardwood for the 2000 gold to subsidize the cost of my mill. Since it's a festival day, I decided to do some minor chest organization before heading over to Sophia's to gift her a fairy rose. On the way back to the farm, I chop down whatever trees I can, and after laying down a cobblestone path in front of the shed, I spend the rest of the evening clearing more land before heading to the Spirits Eve Festival. Eh, everything looks pretty much the same except... Okay, wow, this is different. The maze here is much bigger and more complex than just heading left and looking for an opening. So yeah, this is a welcome change. After a bit of navigating, I'm able to get the golden pumpkin, and then head home, and immediately drop the pumpkin into the shipping bin to sell. Day 83 done, with 5,699 gold made today. Day 84, and we're at the last day of fall. Today the Queen of Swords teaches me the recipe for artichoke dip, which, by the way, she apparently guzzles down the sauce like a milkshake, what? Okay. Anyway. Afterwards, I head to the traveling merchant with my fingers crossed in the hopes that I'll finally be able to resolve the bundle issues. And no. Nope. And with that, the only remaining hope I have is that the winter night market somehow gives me the fruit I need. Honestly, it's looking pretty unlikely that the bundles will be completed in the first year now. To shake off my troubles, I head off to Sophia to give her another fairy rose before heading to Pierre's to stock up on more fairy rose seeds for when my greenhouse is eventually acquired and I'm able to grow presents for Sophia. I head back to the farm to drop off the seeds and also collect some bombs for use in the skull caverns. Before heading in, I trade off some more rubies for some of that sweet spicy eel goodness, and also pay Sandy a visit for the first time. So Sandy's portrait has a brand new look in Expanded, which I think is much better than vanilla. I don't know, what do you think? Anyway, on to the mines. It's not a lucky day today, so let's see how I go. I'm not expecting much. Aside from having to deal with a swarm Everything goes pretty smooth. Since now I have the Galaxy Sword, fighting is a lot easier, so I stick around to fight in the hope of finding more bombs or spicy eel. Plus, with the heal trick I do to stay safe, it's not too dangerous. What's that? Heal trick, you say? Yeah, if you're curious, I have a good way to stay alive in the Skull Caverns when you're playing single player. It's a pretty simple one, but instead of going over it here, I've left a link in the description to a video that takes you through it. Be sure to check it out if you're having trouble with the Skull Caverns. It might just save your life. Anyway, by the end of the day, I'm able to get to floor 27 before having to call it quits. And look at all the stuff I found. And that's day 84 done. I reach level 8 combat, level 8 mining, and make 1,935 gold. And with that, fall is now wrapped up. Day 85, the first day of winter. The Sturgeon Pond is asking for two maple syrup, which I happen to have, so they are nice and happy. The shed is now set up with indicators out the front to make it easy to know when things are done. I craft another two kegs, another cheese press, and another mayo jar and place them in their corresponding buildings. But yeah, since it's winter, now the morning ritual is super short. I just have to collect produce from the animals and that's about it. So after that, I head to Sophia's to give her another fairy rose and then head to the bus stop to begin the interactions with Krobus. And with that, I head to the skull caverns. Oh nice, a shaft right away. Well, that's lucky. Seems like it's going to be a good start. Wow. Okay, I've never seen so much iridium clumped up like that. It's only floor 8, and it's not even a lucky day, and there's this much in one spot. So even though I only end up making it to floor 22 in the end, the run was made worth it just by that. Once I get back to the farm, I quickly throw a bunch of wheat in the newly finished mill and call it a day. And that's day 85 done with 3,563 gold made. Day 86. I get a letter saying Robin is now selling wood chippers. I head to Robin's where we get a cutscene of Robin's newly finished bed design to which Demetrius is offering his critique. So, since tomatoes are technically a fruit and Demetrius is technically a wanker, I join the discussion by picking the option to say the aesthetics are perfect. And the cutscene ends and Robin is nowhere to be found. Okay, so I can't purchase the wood chipper, I guess. Since I have some money, I pop into Pierre's to buy the amount of flour I'm missing for the bundle, and then head to the desert where I do my spicy eel trades, and then head into the skull caverns. So, winter is kind of going to be repetitive, as most of the time, this is pretty much going to be my routine. Even though it was a bad luck day, I make it to floor 31 before having to go home. And hey, look at all the goodies I got. Since there's a little bit of time left in the day, I go donate some things to the community center. And that's day 86 done, with 3,817 gold made today. Day 87, it's Linus's birthday, so I head up to the mountains to deliver him a present, which maxes out his friendship. 
Afterwards, I head to Robin's to purchase a shipping container to place next to the animal buildings. When I leave Robin's house, we get the cutscene where Robin makes it look like I want to ask Linus something. But instead, we just say he's doing well and watch him frolic in the woods. Then I go drop off a snow yam to the community center. Next, I head to Clint's for some Omni Geode smashing. After selling off the duplicates, I head to the museum to donate. A while ago, I got a quest to give Pam a pale ale. Since I now have one and I'm headed to the bus stop where she is, I decide this is the perfect opportunity to give her one. Which she just drinks right before she's about to drive me to the desert. Yeah. Anyway, Skull Cavern time. Another unlucky day. The highlights of today's run include a slime dropping a whole iridium bar on floor 14. And on floor 17, I got this insane cluster of gold ore. So despite it being an unlucky day, that's some really solid stuff. Anyway, by the end of it, I make it to floor 21 before having to call it a day. And here, look at my inventory to check out all the other goodies I got. And that's day 87 done. I reached level nine combat and earned 10,387 gold. Day 88, I opened the morning up by using some of my iridium bars to craft an iridium band, and a ring of yoba to replace my magnet and light rings. The iridium band provides light and magnetism, and the ring of yoba will occasionally protect me from damage, so these are nice upgrades. I decide to clear some stone from the quarry and head to Clint's to smash open more geodes, and go collect the golden scythe from the cave. While I'm here, I also drop off 20 coal and some of the iridium ore Clint has requested. Next, I pop into the museum to donate. Now that I have all the dwarf scrolls, I quickly head to the mines to blow up the wall and give the dwarf his first present to get the friendship started. Back at the farm, I remember I found a note telling me to bring maple syrup to the woods, so I decide to get that done. Oh, it looks like Star to Expand has changed some things with the bear. I head to the West Woods as directed by the bear to see what's up. I looked around for a while but couldn't find the spot the bear was talking about. I did however find a spot with a bunch of ancient swords so I guess that's something. Anyway, that's day 88 done, I reached level 9 mining and earned 4,439 gold today. Day 89. Today is a lucky day so maybe today there'll be luck at the traveling merchant? Nope. After yet another letdown, I head to the museum to donate one of the ancient swords I found yesterday. Okay, so whilst I might fail certain goals, one thing I want to do is make sure that I reach floor 100 before the first year ends. Alright, I have 75 bombs, so hopefully that'll do. And after trading some rubies for spicy eel, I have 21 spicy eels to get me through the run as well. I should be able to get pretty far, right? Well, no. Uh, by the end of it, I only reach floor 65. I did get a treasure room that gave me a blue cowboy hat, so hey, that's something. Anyway, here's a look at all the goodies I found from this run. And that's day 89 with 5,964 gold made. Day 90 and Clint wants me to deliver an amethyst to Emily. So today I head to Clint's to donate the remaining iridium ore he requires to blow up that rock at the mountains. And since today is a bad luck day, I decide it's finally time to upgrade my pickaxe to iridium. I then pop in to see the dwarf to give him a gift and then head to the woods to gather hardwood. While I'm in the area, I have another go looking for the secret place the bear mentioned. And after a bit of digging around, I find his new spot and see that he's running a new shop where you can purchase things like honey, crafting materials, fish, and two new recipes, which I'll have to buy later to earn 100%. So hey, that's a neat addition. Since I can't go to the mines today, I decide to catch this season's legendary fish, the Glacier Fish, which I immediately get on the first attempt, so hey, that's nice. Okay, so we have a bit of time here. Uh, hey, Sophia, wanna tell us a joke and pad out the rest of today? Outstanding. Anyway, I spend the rest of the day on the East Bridge fishing, and that's day 90 done with 10,531 gold. Day 91. The Queen of Source teaches me plum pudding, and Pierre is at my door at 6 in the morning doing some door-to-door -door marketing. Anyway, it's off to Sophia to give her first gift of the week, before deluding myself further with a traveling merchant, which of course still has nothing to fix my bundle situation. So I head to the woods to collect more hardwood. Oh, it's Carolyn's birthday today. Alright, let's see if we can go cook something for her to gift. Okay, that scared the crap out of me. But it would seem that Clint is done with his, uh, little project. Anyway, I settle on a spangle flower since I don't really have any good recipes right now. I decide to spend the rest of the day fishing at the ocean. There's also a quest to catch a squid for Willy, which I do manage to get, and I'm able to deliver to him as he's heading home at 12 in the morning. And that's day 91, I reach level 9 foraging, and earn myself 2,420 gold. 
Day 92. Okay, I'm gonna go pick up my pickaxe from Clint. Oh. Right. Uh, today is the Festival of Ice, so I head to the woods to do some quick hardwood chopping, and then head over to the Festival of Ice. Aside from a nice little portrait upgrade at the shop, and the new villagers now also being here, there isn't really too much to see. So let's get to the fishing contest. I hate that I'm at this much of a disadvantage early. I have to walk to my spot and I'm not just placed there. Really? Really? Oh, no, come on. What do you mean, three in a row? <sighs> there we go! I'm probably not going to win because of that. <laughs> the first 30 seconds were just nothing. Like, ah! Okay, that did not go well. Honestly, I've never had this happen to me before. I mean, usually you get one piece of algae. And if you get two, yeah, that's pretty bad luck. But three in a row and then a the fourth one? Wow. <sighs> and yeah, I end my day with chopping some trees down around the farm. And that's day 92 done. I make 5,288 gold. Day 93. Today I head to Clint's to collect my shiny new Iridium pickaxe. And it's another good luck day today, so I get my bombs ready for another attempt at the Skull Caverns. Before I get started, I trade whatever quartz I have to get more bombs, which brings the total to 65 bombs. I managed to get to floor 82 before having to call it quits for the day. Not really anything of note happened on this run other than finding a bunch of secret notes and all these goodies here. And that's day 93. I reach level 10 mining and pick the gemologist passive and also earn 4,830 gold for the day. Day 94. Oh. Today my dinosaur egg finally hatches and we welcome Wario's pet Yoshi to the farm. That's what evil Yoshi would be called, right? I head to the dwarf to purchase 20 more bombs to make sure I have enough firepower to get through the mines. So I don't waste money and time, I decide to see how the first 25 floors of the run go. If the floors go well and I have a decent enough lead, then I plan to fully commit to the run. And boy am I glad I do this because the first 20 floors I had no luck whatsoever. Didn't get a single mineshaft, and it was pretty much well past 3pm by the time I got to floor 30. Despite having a lucky day today, yeah, I only managed to reach 61, so... The only thing of note that happened on today's attempt was finding two more prismatic shards. And that's day 94 done with 4,004 gold made. Day 95. I finally find the secret note that's asking for a rabbit's foot, so I head into town and trade a rabbit's foot for a lucky charm. I then head to the desert for another crack at reaching floor 100. Okay, first floor, we get a mine shaft. Okay, cool, I'm committed to this run now. The shaft takes me to floor 9. At floor 11, we get a dinosaur floor. I forgot to bring staircases, so I have to deal with this floor as best as I can, and hope it doesn't hinder me too much in the long run. I get greeted with another mine shaft at floor 14, which takes me to floor 20. Floor 21 has a treasure room, and it gives me an iridium sprinkler. Alright, nice. What? A second treasure room at 22, and it's a crystallarium. Okay, even if I fail to get to 100, this has been insane so far. Floor 24 has another mine shaft that takes me to 30. Uh, nothing really happens for the next 10 floors until floor 41 where I get another treasure room. Except it's only geodes this time. Oh well. Floor 44 has an infestation, but this time I'm able to skip it with a staircase. And floor 45 has another mine shaft waiting for me that takes me to 53. Okay, this is starting to look good now. Floor 54 and another mine shaft takes me to floor 65. Then floor 66 has another mine shaft that takes me to floor 73. Wow. In just a couple of minutes, I go from 44 to 73. That's pretty insane. But it's not over yet. Floor 76 gives me another mine shaft for a small jump to 79. I have to use another staircase at 81 because of a dinosaur floor. And then at floor 85, another mine shaft appears, which takes me to 92 and a fourth treasure room. But again, it's just geodes. At floor 94, I get this spiral map, which is probably one of the worst maps to try and navigate. So I skip it with a staircase. Oh man, it's past midnight, but I'm so close. And there it is at 98. We get a mine shaft, so nice. This is just going to take me straight to floor 100. All right, this is it. I did it. And that floor 100 is... 
treasure room with cactus seeds. What? What happened? Where's the cutscene? Where's my milk? All right, I'll tell you what happened here. Turns out, before you do this challenge to get to floor 100, uh, you you need to actually find the secret note that tells you to do it, which I currently don't have. Okay, so I did make it to floor 100. I did. It's just nobody asked me to do it yet. All right, cool. That's uh, day 95 done. Here's the stuff I found, 8,989 gold. All right, let's move on. Day 96. All right, let's just shake off the fact that I reached floor 100 when I didn't have to. The stuff I got from yesterday was still really good, so let's just start today anew. I go to the traveling merchant who still hasn't fixed my bundles, but she has a fairy rose on sale, so I pick that up. I deliver a void essence to the wizard for an easy thousand gold, and then head to Sophia to drop off the fairy rose. Then it's off to the skull caverns for a nice casual day of mining with no pressures. So yeah, I just reached floor 36. I find some more secret notes, but not the one I'm looking for. But hey, I got these goodies at least. Anyway, day 96 over, 9,267 gold made today. Day 97 and the end is near. The Sturgeon are asking for Omni Geodes, so hey, that's nice and easy. And overnight, I put five more Iridium Bars to smelt, so I can now purchase the insanely expensive recipe for the Desert Totem. In today's run at the mines, on floor 23 I get a treasure room with a purple slime egg, but other than that, I make it to floor 43 and also find these goodies along the way. And that's day 97 done. I reach level 10 combat, and I go with the Brute Passive here. Since I chose to sell a bunch of gems today, I made 25,052 gold. Day 98. After crying at the traveling merchants because they still haven't fixed my problems, I head to the woods for more hardwood, then clean up more junk around the farm. I also go back to collect the chocolate cake recipe from the Queen of Sauce because I forgot to grab it in the morning. It's been a while since I've done some socializing, so today I decide to go around town giving presents, seeing cutscenes, you know, being social. Speaking of cutscenes, I get to see a new cutscene with Claire, who we haven't really seen much of outside of the Jojo Mart. It's a small exchange where she doesn't have enough money for a meal at the saloon, so we offer to chip in. And then yeah, the rest of the evening is spent on the farm doing more cleanup. Not a whole lot going on today, but hey, at least the farm is cleaner. And that's day 98 done, with 7,826 gold made today. Day 99. After some final hardwood gathering, I head to Robbins to purchase the next upgrade to my house. I may not have had success in other ways of progression, but okay, here we go. The bigger house is finally incoming. Since today is a lucky day, I head to the Skull Caverns for more splunking. Finally, on floor 8, I finally get it. I get the note inviting me to floor 100. Gee, sure would be nice to reach floor 100 in the first 100 days of this playthrough. Anyway, uh, on floor 17, I decide to leave since I wasn't able to commit to a full dive and the night market is in town. Maybe the merchant will finally have something that I can add to the bundles. And no. So I use the rest of the evening to do some fishing in the submarine to catch the exclusive deep water fish you can't get elsewhere. And that wraps up day 99, 5,802 gold made. And here we are at day 100 at last. Now, when I was playing the game, I in no way planned out how my playthrough was going to tie in with this video. And I wasn't really thinking, yes, we've got to make something good happen on day 100 to give it some epic ending. So with that in mind, I think you're going to be happy with day 100. It's me looking for skeletons and murdering them all day. Okay, not really. In the morning, I do chop some hardwood and I do give up at about 4.30 to go to the night market. I see the mermaid show for a free pearl and then do some more deep sea fishing to get the remaining exclusive fish. But yeah, that's that's it. That's day 100 done. I make 3,667 gold, and yeah, that's it. Those were my first 100 days of Stardew Valley Expanded. I got to see a bunch of new content for the first time, which was great. Stardew Valley has been one of those games that I've just sunk a ridiculous amount of time into over the years, so it was great to see it get a new breath of fresh air with all this new content. But in terms of my goals and what I wanted to do for this video, whilst yeah, the first year isn't over yet, it seems the dream of getting all the bundles done in the first year has all but slipped away. The relationship with Sophia is going well, and wedding bells are ringing in the distance for Wario. The Skull Caverns are still calling out Wario's name as Mr. Chi sits there waiting for a champion to arrive. I'm confident that at the very least, by the time the first year is up, two of the three goals I set myself will be completed. And whilst none of them were met within the first hundred days, I walk away having learnt so many things that'll make sure that next time, maybe, 
just maybe, I won't accidentally sell my sunfish and ruin any chance I had at finishing the bundles in time. <clears throat> <sighs> that was my first hundred days of Stardew Expanded. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to see me talk more about the games I play, be sure to subscribe. Until next time, thanks for watching.